Hi, in this clip we will discuss about random variables, which is an important uh, topic again in uh, probability theory. Okay, so uh, recall that when we talk about uh, uh, random experiment, uh, we perform some random experiment, okay, and we get an outcome. However, sometimes we do not want to know the actual outcome, but we want to know some quantity related to it. For example, when we toss two dice, we might not want to know the actual value of each die, but we want to know the sum of the values. Also, when we toss a fair coin, we might only want to know the number of heads. Or when we pick a random poker hand, we might want to know we want to know the highest card, not the the value of every card that we have picked. So these quantities are known only after the outcomes of the experiments are obtained. For example, if we, we, we call these random variables. So if you let a random variable x equal the number of heads from five coin tosses, after we perform the experiment and we get this uh, edge head, tail, head, tail, tail, we know that with this outcome, the value of x is 2. For example, if we, if this is our experiment, we pick a number from this set without without replacement, and we let m be the highest number that you pick. Okay, random number m be the highest number that you pick. So there are many outcomes, right? One is uh, we we pick a number without replacement, so maybe one and two, one and three, one and four, two. And one, two and three, two and four, and with each of these outcome, right? <coughs> the value of m is defined according to the our definition. So for this outcome, m is two. For this outcome, m is three, four, two, three, four. Okay, and we can co continue on that for every possible you know, outcome. And the value of m is uh, 3, 3, 4, and then 4. Alright, so um, th these are the value of the random variable after we get the outcome, okay? So given an outcome, we can figure out the actual value of this random variable, okay? And, and also, Note that each outcome are is equally likely. So the the probability that you get this outcome is one over twelve, right? For for every one of them. Therefore, we can discuss about we can use this to talk about the probability that a random variable we take on some value, right? So if you want to figure out the the probability that m equal three, so we need to look at all the outcomes where m is three. And these are there are four of them, right? So and you, if you sum them up, so you can uh, and each of these outcome occur with probability one over twelve. So you're gonna get this to be uh, four to over twelve, which is one over three, one third. Okay, and and this is true for any value of uh, the random variable. So we can talk about the the probability of each value of the 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 random variable so what's the probability that m equals one so there are no outcome where m equals one so the probability is zero and what is the probability that m equals two so you list this out and then you uh you there are two out of twelve so it's one one six one third and then one half okay <coughs> so these are the probability that uh the random variable would take on various value. And what is the probability that m equal 5? You can see that there is no outcome where m is equal 5, so this is again 0. Okay. So let's come back and, and look at the real definition of random variables. So a random variable is a function from the sample space to real numbers. So basically, you have a sample space. This is a set of all outcomes. Or outcomes, and for each value of the outcome, this function random variable, say x, 
map is to some real number. Okay, uh, that, uh, that's that's the definition of the random variable, and and it might it might not be the case that uh, it's it maps the sample space to real numbers. For example, you can have random variable which are uh, a graph or something that is more uh, complex. But in in this course, we basically look at usually look at random variables that takes on value from real numbers, or, and and usually we're gonna look at random variables that takes on value from just a set of integers. Okay, so you have an outcome, and this function x maps the the, the outcome to some some value. Okay, so this is the definition. So random variable of uh essentially is a function. Okay, it's not a variable. It's a function uh, that takes you uh, from an outcome to a real number. So there are two types of this uh, of random variables. So one is this, which is discrete. So a discrete random variable is, is a random variable that takes on count countable number countable number of possible values. For example, if you want to pick randomly pick uh, an integer from this set and let the random variable x be that integer. So there are only uh, a thousand of them, so this is a, uh, a discrete random variables, and you you may ask uh, you you want to roll a dice and and a dice and get get four. So you want to ask how many times you have to roll a dice to get four, okay? So the random variable maybe we define it as y to be uh, the number of times you have to roll a dice to get four, and it it is possible that this random variable y can take on the very very large value if you are extremely extremely unlucky okay but that's possible right so the set of possible value of y is the set of uh, zero not not zero just one two and so on okay so uh it takes there are infinitely many possible value of y but there are countably many of them so it remains a discrete random variables another type of random variable is continuous basically it's not the the those that are not discrete okay for example you you have a circle and we want to randomly pick a point inside this circle. Note that there are <coughs> there are so many points in here, and 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 there are uncountably many points in this circle. So this random variable so is not uh, discrete. Okay, and we can given a random variable, we can define an event on this random variables. And this is what we've done previously, because a random variable is a function. Okay, that maps from the sample space to some value. Okay, so you can write it it like this explicitly. So uh, you take an outcome and and this random variable is a function x. Okay, so uh, we can define an event x equals a to be the subset of sample space <coughs> for which a random variable x is a. Okay, so suppose these are uh, the sample space. And uh, maybe this for this uh, subset of outcomes, uh, x x equals uh, a in this subset uh, in this subset of out outcomes. So the events x equals a uh, refer to this set subset of outcomes. Okay, so it's a it's it's a set of outcomes for which uh, x equals a. Okay. Right. So from that we can uh, come back and and try to. Write down these uh, probabilities of uh, the random variables that takes on various value. Okay, so suppose we toss two dice, and let's x be the sum of two dice. Uh, what's the probability that uh, x equals one? That's impossible, right? So you cannot get uh, one and zero. So the probability is zero. So what's the probability that you get two? So it's uh, just you have to get one and one, and this happened with uh, probability one over uh, thirty-six because there are thirty-six ways to roll two dice. And what's the probability that x equals three? It's this, right? So it's two over thirty-six. So what's the probability that x equals four? So the set of uh, possible outcomes is uh, maybe one, three, uh, two, two, and finally three, one. So it's three over thirty-six. It's what the probability that x equals five. So it's one, four. Two, three, three, two, uh, four, one. So it's four over thirty-six. You can see the pattern now, right? 
but it will be gone after you reach this point probably so what's the probability that you get eight so you have to pick uh, maybe uh, one and seven that's not possible so it's gonna, gonna get two and six okay and three and five and four four uh, five three and six two so that's uh one two three four five five thirty six okay all right so that's the probability of uh the event that uh, this random variable x takes on various value okay so we can look at this uh we can define given a random variables a discrete random variable we can talk about these probabilities okay so it's it's an event so so we can talk about the, that probability and we can we're going to use it so often okay so often so we have to define we give it a name so we call it a probability mass function okay and for this uh, random variable x it's this if you plot it you can get that so this is like uh, 1 over 36 this is 2 over 36 and so on and reach the peak here to 3 4 5 6 6 over 36 and it go down 5 over 36 up to 12 then you get to so if you plot this probability mass function you're gonna get it uh, the, the graph like this so let's look at the more uh, more examples um, so suppose we have a fair coins and we toss a fair coin for five times and we let the random variable y equals the number of heads that we get. And we can uh, use the same analysis kind of analysis to figure out the probability of y being 0, y being 1, 2, 3, and 5, right? Because if you toss it for 5 times, uh, you, we, you're going to get uh, from 0 to 5 heads. So what's the probability that you're going to get uh, 0 head? So it's this probability of... So the only event, uh, the only outcome in this event, is this, and there are two to the five possibilities, right? It's a fair coin, so this is uh, one over two to the five, and that's one over thirty-two. Okay, so what's the probability that you get uh, only one uh, hit, only one hit? So there are five possible ways right so you have to pick which of the coin to be to get hit right and so on so that's uh, five possible ways so it's five over 32 so what's the probability that you're gonna get uh, two heads so you have five five uh, coins you want to pick two right so it's uh, there are So head, head, tail, 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 and so on, something like that. Uh, if you can count up, count it. So it's uh, it's five. Choose two, right over thirty-two, and five choose two is what? Is ten. So it's ten over thirty-two. And you can argue the same way, and you get this. And finally, this is 1 over 32, okay? If you plot the graph, you get that the probability mass function of this random variable y is this, is this graph. Okay, it's very small here, and it goes up, and then it's reached the, the top here, okay? <coughs> All right, so what can we tell from this uh, PMF, this probability mass function? Can we tell... The value of the random variable from this probability mass function. Uh, we only get the, to know the value of the, so the the actual value of the random variables from the uh, after you perform the the possible. You can tell the possible value of the random variables, right? So we look at the value of the look at the PMF, which uh, look at the value of the random variable where the PMF is greater than zero then you can say, okay, the pro random number can take on that value. But you cannot find the actual value of the random variable from the PMF. So you can, you know. So uh, you can figure out the probability that it is greater than some value of A. 
okay you can look look at so it's look like this right and say suppose this is a and you can uh, take a sum of this value right so you can figure this out so this is yes and can you tell the value of random variable on average so what does it mean for for something to be on average okay so if you look at this uh, this PMF of two random variables that we have discussed so far so this is the sum of two dice okay you can see that uh, it's it's metric and also if you take the average okay of this value you probably believe that uh, you're gonna end up at here at seven right for this one if you take the average you probably end up here so this is 2.5 okay so how, how can we how can we formalize this idea of of average okay so um, okay so the average or formally we call it expectation or the expected value of a random variable x okay is is what we want to take the average right so we have to consider all the value of the random variables right but then uh, so you have to 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 take all this value into account but you shouldn't look at the value say 6 or minus 1 because it's impossible for the value for the variable to take on that value okay however if what if you just take the average okay so you say uh, it's uh, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and you take the average over say uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is not the actual uh, uh, is this an average that we want if you look at the curve right you can see that it is more likely that we are in end up in here and here right than than zero zero right so it's not it's not uh it's not uh probably uh doesn't make sense to take on to just look at the average and put on the weights for zero to be uh equal to two right because we're more likely to end up at two right than zero okay so the the definition of the expectation is not just the average but it's the weighted average so basically we look at zero and we weight it on with the probability that we end up at zero so this is one point one over 32 plus uh one what's the probability that you end up at one so it's uh, five over 32 plus uh, two times 10 right 10 over 32 plus 3 times 10 over 32 plus 4 times 5 over 32 plus 5 times 1 over 32 and if you plug them in so this is over 32 and you get 1 plus 5 plus 20 plus 30 plus 20 plus 5 and that's what is that so this is uh 50 60 7 uh 81 right 80 uh hold on uh 50 70 60 uh one hold on 81 over 32 i think I, I made a mistake uh, oh so this shouldn't be one okay sorry and that's uh, 2.5 okay so that's what we want so the definition of the expected value of a random variable X or we notationally we write expectation of X okay so this is the weighted average okay so we look at our possible value of x okay so x equals i i plus minus infinity to infinities okay so the probability that x takes on that value value i times i okay so this is the weighted average over our possible value of x with this uh this is the the weight the weight for each value right so you weight the value i with the probability that you're going
got to take on that value. So that's the definition of the expectation. Okay, so and we write like this E of X. In this example, we gonna look at uh, the previous random variable. So we toss the dice two times, and let X be the random variable to be the sum of that value. Okay, so we wanna find expected expected value of X. Okay, so expected value of X equals. So you have to look at the the possible value of x. So it's two, three. 4, 5, 6, right, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you have to multiply all this by the probability that you're going to get this value, right? So the probability that you get 2 is uh, 1 over 36 plus 2 over 36 plus 3 over 36 plus 4 over 36 plus 5 over 36 and so on so it's 1 over 36 let let me try to finish it 36 plus uh, 3 over 36 uh, 4 over 36 plus 5 over 36 plus 6 over 36 if you compute them all out, or you can see that the, the if you take this, it has the same weight, and the average of this is seven, right? And you can just write them out and calculate all of these uh, values, and you get that this is seven. Okay, so this is how we compute the one way to compute the expectation of a random variable is to uh, to enumerate them all and then look at the probabilities. Later on, we will see a better way or an easier way to deal with this. Okay, in in many cases. All right. So the question of the segment is that is this? Uh, we say that uh, the expected value of random variable x, right, is uh, something like an average of the value of x. So can you find? Is it always possible that uh, x has to be equal to average with some probabilities? My guess is that uh, no, right? So the question, this question asks you to find random variable x such that the probability that x equal the expectation of x is zero. Okay, it's not hard to find, but you need to think about it for a little bit. All right. So I'll see you in the next clip.